Who doesn't love a good old fashioned nostalgic reminder of their childhood? These little Debbie oatmeal cream pies, are you kidding me? My grandmother used to have these in her house all the time. My mom used to keep them for after school snacks. And you know what? When you're a kid and you really don't know much better, these are the best things in the world, right? The smell of it, the taste of it, it just kind of brings you back. But you know what? I'm kind of over it. I'm a little older, I'm a little more mature, and now that I know how to cook, this is what I'm going for. These are Little Debbie sandwich pies, upgraded and amazing. These guys have all the flavor and more of these little childhood reminders. The smell, the taste, the vanilla, the oats, the texture. These guys are where it's at. So stay with me. I'm gonna show you exactly how we recreate our own version, the Kitchen Bravo way of the Little Debbie oatmeal cream pie. Okay, to get started on these cookies, um, we're gonna use a stand mixer, and if you have a handheld mixer too, that's great. And I'm also gonna use the food processor because what I'd like to do is kind of mimic the texture of the Little Debbie oatmeal cookies. And if you see these oats right here, um, you know, they're, they're, whole, they're whole grain oats. You can see, you know, the flat oat texture right there. And if you look at the Little Debbie snack cake, it's kind of, it's more mealy. It doesn't have that, that kind of look and that grain and that texture. So that tells me that it's kind of polarized or blitzed a little bit. So that's what I'm gonna do in the food processor. First thing, I'm gonna put a stick and a half of butter into my stand mixer here, fitted with a paddle attachment. And I wanna cream the butter and sugars together. So here we go, got a stick and a half of softened butter. And it's, you know, it's just so much easier to, to mix it together when the butter's softened and it's not hard. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do a second half of butter. This is about three quarter cup of packed brown sugar. This is um, one half plus one eighth cup of granulated sugar. So I'll just put that right there into the mixer and we're gonna start creaming it all together. Okay, so the butter and sugar has come together really nicely. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add in one egg, a whole egg, and about a teaspoon of vanilla extract. So it's not gonna take very much, just a little bit of vanilla. And there we go, perfect. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and blitz these together and get that to blend in as well. All right, the butter, sugars, egg, and vanilla have all come together and are beautifully creamed. Now we're gonna go ahead and mix up our dry ingredients. So our dry ingredients right here, I have um, one cup of flour, and in this bowl I have a half a teaspoon of baking soda, and I have half a teaspoon of salt, and that's gonna go right into the flour. In this bowl I have a teaspoon and a half of cinnamon, I have half a teaspoon of ginger, and just a very, very sparse quarter of a teaspoon of nutmeg. And this is gonna give the pies like a little bit more of that warm, homey kind of flavor, you know, that warm cinnamon and the spice of the, just slight spice of the ginger and just a little bite of the nutmeg. So that's what's gonna make these extra special and just like really, really amazingly, you know, tasty. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix this all up together. All right, now we're gonna move on to the oats. I have a cup and a half of oats right here that I showed you earlier, and these are gonna go right into the food processor. Well, most of them are gonna go into the food processor, and some of them are just gonna get thrown all over the counter, but that's okay, because my counter's clean, and we're going back in. All right, so we're gonna put this guy back on, make sure the lid is done, and we're just gonna pulse it until we get kind of, not quite an oat powder, but you know, kind of like a, a coarse grain of the oats. Pulse it. where we are. Let me get my fork. All right. So this isn't too bad. It's looking really coarse, but I'm still seeing quite a few of the, you know, the whole grains in there. So we're going to go maybe, maybe three more good pulses. That's much better. And you know, they're not all going to be completely ground and pulverized and that's okay because we do like the added texture. All right. So this is much better. See there? Okay. So I'm gonna take you off and put you right in here with the flour. Perfect. All right, 
So we're going to mix this all together. So we have the flour and all of the spices, the baking soda, the salt, the cinnamon. You can even smell the ginger just a little bit. And we're just going to mix up the oats. And I'm going to slowly incorporate it into the creamed butter and sugar mixture. Um, I want to do it like maybe a third at a time. And I'm going to go ahead and just like put a little bit in, just like this. There we go. That's about a third of it. I'm going to turn this on, on low because I want to stir it all and get it like really nicely bound up. And once you see that all of the flour and such is just being like really well mixed in here, you're going to add another third of the dry. Like that. Comme ça. And we're going to mix it up again until that's all well mixed. And then we're going to do the final third and get it all creamed together. Beautiful. Alright. Alright, so our dough is finally made. Everything's come together. You see this has this lovely um, oatmeal like texture, but it's not very it's not very big. You know, you don't have like the great big huge flakes of oats. You can see where it's still like very well ground up. Just right here. And the smell of it. It smells just like a little Debbie pies. I and mean, I just, I can't wait for these things to come out of the oven. And honestly, I'm gonna be very surprised if half of this cookie batter actually makes it onto the cookie sheets because I mean, who doesn't love raw cookie batter? I mean, hello? It's amazing. It's butter and sugar and more sugar. So it's great. All right, I'm going to get all of this scraped out and then we're gonna start putting it on our cookie sheets. Our cookie dough has come together beautifully. I mean, it's nice and sticky, which is exactly what we need. Look at that. You can see the flakes of cinnamon and ginger and all the other spices. And you can even see a couple of the, you know, the whole flakes of the, of the oats, which is great. It's the perfect texture. That's exactly what I'm looking for. So my oven is preheated to 375 degrees and I have a silk hat line baking sheet. And what I'm gonna do is drop this cookie dough um, by tablespoonful. So I'm trying to replicate the, the recipe pretty much as close to possible. And I need two tablespoons worth of cookie dough per cookie. And that's gonna give me a nice big round disc that I can go ahead and fill up with the cream. Okay, so I'm gonna put that guy right there and I'm gonna go ahead and set them about two inches apart. So I'm gonna fill up my cookie sheet with all of the cookie dough. I mean, it's not for me, it's for the sheep. Okay. I can't eat it right now. I need to. I want to. Badly. So, you know, if there's a, a price for showing restraint, I win. I win. Okay. This is really amazing cookie dough. It's so good. All right. So I have three, six, nine, ten, twelve. Yay! 12 cookies that are gonna be ready, so that's gonna give me six sandwiches. I'm gonna put them in the oven and let them bake for about eight to 10 minutes. Um, they're going to spread out and kind of flatten a little bit, and then we have to let them cool completely before we can go ahead and fill them. So, into the hot oven, they go. Bye bye. And I'm gonna set the timer for nine minutes, you know, eight to 10, so we'll set it for nine and just kind of check on it from there. Bingo. It's been nine minutes, and let's take a look through the window here. Um, they look really good. They look like they've spread beautifully. So let's take a peek, see? Oh yeah, okay. This is exactly what we're looking for. So you can see like the golden brown edges around the bottom of the cookies. That is perfect. That's absolutely perfect. This is what I'm looking for. Okay, I'm gonna let these guys cool for quite a few minutes um, because I don't want it to melt the filling that's gonna be inside. So these guys are gonna sit here on this rack cool down completely and then only then only after they've cooled only then are we going to mix up our filling which is going to be marshmallow cream and butter and powdered sugar and then we're going to stuff these guys and do a taste test comparison next to the original little debbie oatmeal cream pie so stick around the cookies have cooled completely now they've been out of the oven for quite a few minutes and they're still very cool to the touch um, they're very firm, which is exactly what we want. I can tell by the texture that they're still chewy. So what I'm gonna do now is since I did leave them on the baking sheet to cool, I wanna turn them upside down and get the flat side up. 
So that way if there's any like residual moisture or anything else, I don't want it to make the cookie soggy and compromise the integrity of, you know, of what it's holding whenever it's filled up with the, with the marshmallow cream. So I'm just gonna go ahead and turn these guys over. And you can tell that they're already like going to be considerably larger than the Little Debbie snack cakes. Uh, these are probably about the size of like the, you know, the double decker ones. So here's an original snack cake right here compared to the other one. So you can tell it's maybe 10% bigger, but hey, I've never heard anybody complain about a cookie being too big. All right, so to make the marshmallow cream, we've got our sand mixer here with the paddle attachment. I'm gonna put in one stick of butter um, right here, which is really kind of funny because um, I was in a debate, a rather heated debate, believe it or not, you know, like what's the cream filling in the Little Debbie? Is it marshmallow? No, it's butter. No, it's marshmallow. No, it's butter. We'll come to find out we were both right. It's buttercream as well as marshmallow fluff mixed into it. So there's always room for compromise. So into my stick of butter, I'm gonna go ahead and put in one cup of powdered sugar. And we're gonna start this going together and mixing. The butter and the powdered sugar have blended in really, really well and it's got like this beautiful golden kind of colored or golden hued um, frosting. So now I'm gonna add just a little bit of vanilla. So this is gonna be about half of a teaspoon of vanilla. I'm gonna put like a, just a little pinch of salt because that's just going to go ahead and enhance the flavor. And we're gonna whiz this up for another 15 seconds. Okay, so in a previous video, a previous episode, you saw me make marshmallow fluff, and here is the marshmallow fluff that we made. So it's egg whites and sugar and corn syrup and a whole lot of other really great good things. Um, if you did watch the video, you would also see me get a little too excited and happy to play with the blowtorch. Kitchen tools are awesome, man. I get to play with fire. Um, okay, so to add it in here, I'm going to just go ahead and put about, well, all of it. Because, you know, we have bigger cookies and we need more filling, so this is even better, right? Nobody ever complained about too much, too much of a cookie, and I don't think anybody's ever gonna complain about too much of a filling in the cookie either. Marshmallow cream is in, we're gonna lift it and give it another whirl for about 20 seconds just to get it really, really well blended, nice and fluffy. Did you see that? Did you see how glossy and smooth and beautiful this is? I mean, this looks like a beautifully sheen, you know, frosting that you would find in a very, very elegant French bakery. Look at that. Oh, this is gonna be fun. This is awesome. This is absolutely gorgeous. It's so smooth and so silky. I can't wait to sandwich this between the cookies. So what I'm gonna do now is I kind of wanna take a look and size up the cookies, try and get the round ones you know, like the larger ones paired up with the larger ones, the smaller ones with the smaller ones. And I already see ones that are going to work. So I have it in my brain. I'm just gonna go ahead and put them together. These two, the ones that I think are gonna happen and be very happy. Okay, so we're there. If you look at the little Debbie snack cake, I'm gonna get a little knife here and cut one in half because I just have to show you. We're gonna dissect this little snack cake, right? And I see a bunch of little crevices here which is really good. And I think for mass production, they probably have to put, you know, a lot of preservatives and a lot of other things into it that are gonna keep it going, that are gonna put on the shelf life. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and cut it in half and open it up and take a look at the cream filling. So you can see this pretty generous right there, a nice generous bit of cream, which is awesome. And if you wanna open it up sideways as well, you see even more of the cream filling. So this is very tacky and very marshmallowy. Ours is just so much better because it's homemade marshmallow fluff, which is really easy to do, and it's mixed with butter. Because let's just face it, butter makes everything better, right? So it's bacon. Oh my god. Oh, we should put some bacon in here. That would be awesome. So I'm gonna get some of my marshmallow cream. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put it on a cookie. And you can be as generous with this as you want. I'm gonna be really super generous, but I don't want it overflowing onto the sides. Cause there are some people in the house that like have phobias for sticky. I do. Not me. I'm not one of them. I'll get sticky and messy. But I wanna go ahead and close this guy up. Oh my gosh, look at that. 
Give it just a light little press. Look at that gorgeous cookie. Yes! All right. Now let that one sit, and I'm going to go ahead and fill up the rest of these cookies. Now, if you want to get really super creative, you can make a double decker. So, I don't know. Should I? Should I just go ahead and make a double decker? Why not? There are no rules. Who says you have to follow the rule, man? You make what you want. Let's spread some fluff on this guy. All right, put this guy here. I'm gonna go ahead and sandwich them together. You want a double deck or double doozy? Here we go. <laughs> Somebody out there smells the cookies. Everybody's not gonna get it. All right, here. All right, ready for big time decadence? There it is. There it is. <laughs> okay, so what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna go ahead and finish these up, but I live by quality control. I love quality control and I have to know what my food tastes like. And I see my producer just cringing right now because he knows what's coming next. It's so good. It's so good. This is like an oatmeal pie with frosting and marshmallow. This is like better than a s'mores. <laughs> this is pretty awesome. All right, I'm gonna go get cleaned up and then I'm going to finish making the rest of these cookies. I'll be back. <laughs> I've sandwiched up all of the cookies. I've got four nice, big, huge sandwiches right here on the plate. Look at those guys. I mean, they're incredible. Come on, wouldn't you rather have this as opposed to this? This has got ingredients in it that I can't even pronounce. I can't even think of what they would look like or how they were even derived. Let's get rid of that. This is good. This is homemade. This is wholesome. This is the real deal oatmeal sandwich cookies. To get the filling to set a little bit better and a little bit more solid free, put it in the refrigerator for just a few minutes. I mean, the filling does have butter in it, so whenever butter is cold again, it kind of starts to solidify. It's gonna give you so much more texture. It's gonna keep that creaminess, that gooeyness that we want, but without going all over your hands. Okay guys, for more super easy, super great, amazing, tasty treats like this, like how to make your own Little Debbie oatmeal cream pie, subscribe to Kitchen Bravo. It's super easy, your family's gonna love it. And once you go homemade, I promise you are never gonna wanna go back. Super simple, super real food right here. Kitchen Bravo, make it. Show us what you've got. Subscribe.